Hi, I'm Trey McLeod. You may remember me from such educational films as Don't Hate, Integrate, and Sakatoa, the Math Magician. Today I'm here to talk about the use of technology in the classroom environment, its impact on the learning process, and what it can mean for our present and future. But first, let's take a stroll down memory lane and see how technology has been used in the classrooms of the past and present. Traditionally, classrooms have centered around a surface on which the teacher may present and display information. Chairs and desks point to the front of the classroom, from which the teacher delivers the lecture. This mystical vertical writing surface is often taken the form of chalkboards and dry erase boards. These systems worked well enough in their time, but it hasn't been until newer media were developed that the shortcomings of these primitive, barbaric public inscribing systems became apparent. Chalk and dry erase markers are consumable, which means schools must constantly restock and resupply, and they're difficult to inventory and keep stock of, with so many in each classroom being used at different rates. It's tedious and annoying when your chalk breaks or your marker runs out of ink while you're teaching, especially if there aren't any more readily available. The boards also have limited writing space, which means that you're constantly erasing information as you go, the process itself leaving a messy cloud of chalk dust behind. Writing on the board also takes twice as long as it should, because a teacher must first plan it out at home and then recreate it in class. Overhead projectors have also been used. I used to use overheads, you know, overhead transparencies. I put them on the overhead projector, mark them up with markers. You know, they're a pain to use. The projectors at this point, you know, are not very bright. They don't work that well. The pen, you know, the markers go dry. They you know, are not very, if they're fine point, they go dry. If they're not, you know, you're drawn with a magic marker and it's not very precise. Now that we've been down memory lane, let's leave the past where it belongs and go visit a modern classroom. Today we're going to sit in on Professor Nick Winter's Political Research with Quantitative Methods Seminar, where Professor Winter uses a tablet PC to prepare and present lectures. Follow me. If we're estimating more than one slope, those slope estimates are also turning. For those of you behind the curve on technology terminology, a tablet PC is a computer with a touchscreen monitor. With a stylus, you can use the touchscreen to write or draw by hand without the necessity of a keyboard or mouse. He uses this tablet PC where he's able to write uh, directly on a web, uh, like a word page um, or some sort of document and uh, it is put up on a screen, but it's a little bit more interactive than just using, say, an LCD projector. Because it's entirely digital, the ink used on screen will never run out. Thus, a teacher will never have to worry about restocking writing utensils. If the teacher wants to use a different color to represent a different line on a graph or some other distinct information, he or she need only click a button to change colors, no more juggling multiple markers or chalk. And if ever a mistake is made, deletions may be made instantaneously with a simple click. Beyond that, it also allows the teacher to prepare the lectures before class and then display them. So it was pretty straightforward to scan the paper copies of the overheads that I had been working with, move those to the laptop, and then, you know, just go to, right to the tablet. Because of the projection system, the teacher can make additions to the lecture without physically blocking the screen. It also allows for a more interactive medium. Uh, he can you know, stop the class and add in a page and start talking and give an example, you know, and, and write out a little graph himself, whereas if you were doing this with just a simple LCD projector, he'd probably have to leave his technology and then go to the chalkboard and draw on it and say, hey, this is actually what I mean. Um, you can see it in this sort of graph. With uh, the technology that we're able to use in the classroom, he doesn't have to do that. Uh, so not only can he bring up what is essentially a PowerPoint presentation, but he can write directly on it, he can bring up new pages, he can obviously bring up the internet. Um, but I think the biggest benefit for them was one I didn't fully anticipate, which is that it turned out to be fairly easy to record everything that happened on the screen along with the audio and then post that stuff as splash files. And you can literally go to any computer and draw up Colab and listen to the lectures, which is tremendously useful if you're trying to review, if you're not able to make it to class. There are a few students who have class conflicts, so it's just a tool that gives him and, and us a lot more flexibility that we otherwise would not have.
there were two students who had scheduling conflicts who couldn't wouldn't have been able to take the class who are taking it at a distance. So they don't come to lecture, they watch them you know, on their own time, they turn right. in the problem sets when they're due, and so forth. But I would think a lot harder before I started posting my lectures from you know, a big undergraduate survey course where my guess is attendance would drop to a half or a third of what it would be ordinarily. Oh geez, the, um, probably the biggest rookie mistake I ever made teaching a class, this was actually a um, a lecture for undergraduates that I gave at Towson University. I, I walk in, I say hi to everybody, it's a guest lecture, and I say, oh, you know, just to help you guys out, since I'm super nice, um, I can email all of you the PowerPoint presentation. So everybody wrote down their uh, email addresses, and then five of them walked out of the class. <laughs> So you're, it's, it's possible always to have a drawback with technology. I, I'm not generally a huge evangelist for teaching in technology. Right. You oh. know, I, I'm all for it when it's advancing you know, an educational objective of some sort or another. And I think this is a clear case where it does. So what does this mean for the present and future? Professor Winter believes that it means better learning. Students may come to learn at their own pace, without the restrictions of a classroom setting. I'm Trey McLeod. Good night. So far, so good? Cool. <laughs>